You know, I'm not even sure how to uh, introduce this young lady right here because she didn't send me. I, I think she sent me a bio. I, I don't think she sent me a bio. But, um, but what I can say is the little bit of information that I can give. She's from, I, I found her from Facebook. She's a truck driver. She had a post in Facebook that was interesting. A lot of comments. A lot of comments on, on that particular post as well. So I was like, huh, maybe uh, she might be an interesting conversationalist. And um, I would get her on and uh, see what's up. Which I just did. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. There we go. There we go. I had to get my picture in there. All right. All right. What's up, everybody? I am Lockout Men here at the Lockout Men podcast. And I do have an individual. I do have an individual guest today. She decides to came, come up in the podcast and chop it up with your boy. As with everybody else. If you want to come on and hit me up, all you got to do is hit me in the Gmail. Lockout Men Gmail at LockoutMenPodcast at gmail.com or you can hit me up in the Instagram. Usually I say this stuff at the end, but I like to say it in the beginning too. Right now, I would like to introduce you guys to Miss Missouri Show Me State. What's going on there, little lady? <laughs> well, first thing first, I, I like to start off by saying thank you for coming on, but I, I'm, I'm curious to know, man. I, I I need to know something. Where the hell you get? Well, I I know where you got the name from, but where you get the where where did you come up with the spelling of misery? This would be a little different. This would be a little different. It's, it's still the same name. It's just spelled different, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well. <laughs> so are, are are you from Missouri? I am not. Nowhere near Missouri. <laughs> wait, wait, hold up. Hold up. You your, your your name is Missouri Show Me State, but you're not from Missouri. No, not at all. <laughs> okay, so again, wait, oh, okay. Now, at first, I said that I I thought I knew where you got the name from because I I I just up and assumed, which I should never assume anything, but I up and assumed that you was from Missouri. So again, I ask you, how did you come up with the name? How, how, how did you come up with the name? Well, a friend of mine was <laughs> a friend of mine always trying to prove stuff to me about what he's saying. So I'm just like. No, no, no. Y'all don't believe me. He's like, okay, I'm going to call you Missouri because apparently I got to show you. <laughs> I can't tell you I got to show you. So that's kind of what it means. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's what's up. That is what's up. All right, Miss Missouri. Yeah. Go ahead and, uh, you know, let let me let the people know where you're from and, uh, and uh, tell them a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm from Florida. Uh, kind of. I'm kind of a little bit from everywhere. I've been in California, Tennessee, and then, of course, Live majority of my life in Florida. Um, the, I guess the reason why I'm kind of driving the truck driver is because of my kids. Mm -hmm. You know, we ended up in a, a, a house. We, we bought the house outright, and um, somebody sold us a house and it had mold in it. Mm -hmm. And considering we paid cash for it, uh, you know, there's, you can't really sue them for the mold issues. And it's caused, you know, wait, rain foggy. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean you can't sue? Did, was, was that... Was that in the contract? Was that told to you? Was was that like did they nah, come, was, did they come to you and say, hey, you know, the house has molding in it, you know, just to let you know. Nah. So it's kind of as is type situation. Oh, okay. Because I, I was about yeah. to, I, I was about to say if it, if it wasn't told to you or if it wasn't in the contract or anything like that, yeah, you could sue them for you know sue them for not letting you know, but. If you got the house as yeah. as is type deal, then uh, yeah, I guess yeah, it most definitely wasn't talked about. We didn't know we didn't know the house had flooded that same year, and it wasn't until like we got in there and started smelling the different smells that we realized it had mold. But you know, in the state of Florida, everything is technically um, 
you on your own. Uh, no fault space, you know. And by really? the way, we didn't have a contract. Yeah, yeah. Wait, so, so if you if I was to go down to Florida and and buy me a house, or would would well yeah, go down to Florida, buy me a house. I and something comes up after I buy it. It's it's pretty much nothing I can do. See, we didn't buy it. That's the thing. We didn't buy it. We we bought it straight from the individual. We didn't buy it to a realtor. So there was nothing in a con- there was no contract. So it was technically an as is situation. So where did y'all where did and based y- off of that. Where where did you find the mold at? I mean, did 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 the person that was selling the house pointed it out to you, or you you found it no, on your own? No, it it was we smelt it and it was airborne, so it kind of got all over the house. It started growing on our dishes. It was growing under the sink. It was growing on our clothes. Ooh. You know, it just yeah, huh. yes, <laughs> yeah, terrible situation. Huh. Wait, wait, and it's not funny, but it's just like that. It, it really did happen. It really did happen. Oh, so you, so you guys started noticing this, and it just wow. So, would you, would would you, so what you do in the in the, in the process of uh, elimination? We ended up. I mean, we technically ended up just throwing a lot of our stuff away and moving as much as we could salvage out of the house, and it's just been sitting there since. So that that was the motivation because I have four kids and you know they, we need a place to go. So we need a place to go. So, so you so wait a minute. So the the so you guys don't you still own the house, but you not, own the house. You still own the house, but y'all not in the house. We can't live in the house. Wow. Is there any yeah. way that you can? Is there any way that you can salvage the house? Like. You know, put it up on. If we salvage the house, it's it's going to cost over thirty thousand dollars to get everything taken care of in that house. But the house is still in a flood zone, and it has flooded more than one time from what I've heard in the neighborhood. So for me to put all my money into that house, it's it, it's a waste. I could tear the house down, but the land is not worth the amount. You know, it, it's just not worth it. So, so in other words, so in other words, you're stuck with a lemon, pretty much. Uh huh. <laughs> Yes. Are you, Not unless anybody want to buy it as is and do whatever they want to do with it. But of course, it'll be a contract that is as is. Okay. Have you have you put it up on the market yet? I haven't put it in the market because I don't want to put no put that burden on nobody. But I've talked to different investors, and um, they keep technically turning it away too. <laughs> so how how did yeah. you get how how did you get how did you get how how did you get stuck in in the situation like that? I mean, where's you okay, so you say so this is all in Florida, right? This is all in Florida. Okay, so let me let me back up a little bit. So you're born and raised in Florida? I was raised in Florida. I wasn't born in Florida, just raised in Florida. Okay, so you was raised in Florida. Okay, so throughout your so throughout your life, you you know you turned into a grown woman. You you never moved anywhere else but Florida. That's where you brought that's where you brought your house in Florida, right? But, well, right. I, I I lived in Nashville, Tennessee for a while as well. Oh, okay. But so I came back to Florida. Oh, you came back to Florida right. after. Oh, okay, okay. So you moved to Tennessee, came back to Florida, brought your house, and then that's where all the issues turns up turn up at at right. the house okay so mm-hmm. so with the house being the, oh man how did you how did you get into well what they call like you know like they call lemons for cars they call money pits for house so how did you end up how did you end up finding that house yeah how did you end up finding the house whoa, whoa, whoa. my mom passed <laughs> The pastor, the pastor's wife, mother, mm-hmm. had that house. And so they decided to sell the house. And we looked at it as a pretty decent deal. Okay. You know, so they, like I say, they, for them to be, you know, pastors, you would think that they would disclose this information. 
But at the end of the day, they're still human beings who are looking to get out of a situation. So right. they sold us the house, and uh, it kind of went from there. So in other words, they just pretty much said, you know, just pretty much sugarcoat like how they doing trucking. They they pretty much sugarcoat and uh and you sorta of, I mean not the you sort of fell for it. And okay, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Did you by chance did your homework or did some research on a house before you brought it? I, I didn't. I kind of left that to my parents because um, they were so adamant about me getting it because they knew the pastor. Okay. So I kind of took their word for it. And we, yeah. Okay. So now with all this has passed, what have you learned from it? Oh, so really the kids. <laughs> 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 Run that by me again. Go to a real estate kid. Like <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah, most definitely. Okay. Have 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 the house inspected. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's definite. Um, it's definite uh, cues and life lessons. You know what I'm saying? It's just unfortunate that. You know, you you lost money in the investment. You know, yo, know, you know, with your with your parents and and everything. And unfortunately, you lost money in the investment. But at least you took you took this down, and hopefully, you turned it around and made it a positive. So, the positive being you getting into trucking. So, how how long how long ago was it when you started trucking? I've only been trucking for six months. Six months. All right. What uh? What more? So, the house situation motivated you to get into trucking, or what? What else? Uh, what else other than that motivated you to get into trucking? Um. Granted, you know, like I said, I have kids I got to take care of, and I, I assumed at the time that trucking would be the easiest get rich quick thing, you know, um, because you make a lot of money in truck driving. But what I didn't know is that it takes a minute to get there. It's not an overnight process. Um, nothing really is overnight. But, like, you know, I just kind of thought, oh, you know, such and such amount of cents per mile, that adds up. Let's keep it rolling. Keep the wheels rolling. You get the money. But what I didn't know is that, you know, the, these, these truck driving companies that are real big, um, they're, in, they're, they're making money off of the new name. So... They give you a little bit of change here, and you don't know no better, and you just run and run and run and trying to figure it out. And lo and behold, before you know it, <laughs> you done ran so many miles and made so little money, you know. You know, and, and I'm I, you want to know something? I am glad that that you being the new Jack, you actually figuring this out because that's the pitfalls yeah. of all you guys, of all you new Jacks. Include well, I'm going to say including myself. But at the time, I knew that at the time, I knew that it wasn't no money to be made in trucking yet. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't take that into going into trucking. You see what I'm saying? I always liked to drive. Uh -huh. I always liked to drive. I always, always wanted to get in, in one of these things. I always wanted to, you know, get my CDLs, you know. I the thing with me was just getting my CDL. You know, it wasn't even about right. it wasn't even about the dry part. I I just wanted my CDL, you know, and I you know, I figured say hey, as long if I had my CDLs, I would always have a job because you know, I I was an entrepreneur back in the day. You know what I'm saying? I was an entrepreneur. I had two successful stores. I had a successful roadside business and now and now I I said the the next thing was for me to get my CDLs and yeah, but see for some of you new jacks that's coming in here, y'all y'all get mystified. You know what I'm saying? By I'm I'm not sure in your particular case, but um, hold on, there we go. 
I'm I'm not sure in your particular case, but you got people telling you, oh man, there's there's all this money. You can make six figures. You can do this. You can do that in trucking. But you got to put your dues in, son. Yeah. You got to put yeah, your dues that is, in. That's true. You got to put your dues in. Yeah. So now that you now that you're figuring out, now that you're figuring out, uh, that you that you got to put your dues in, and you only been in the game for six months. What what have what what was your experience so far in the six months with the company you're with? Oh God, are you ready for this? I'm all I'm all here. Are you really ready for this? I'm all here. Um, so I got on the trainer truck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, trainer was pushing up on me. He's an older man pushing up on me, and I woke up one night or uh, early morning to basically being assaulted. Wait, what? stop. Stop. Hold up. <laughs> Bro, what are you talking about, man? Hold up. Oh. See, that's see, yes. that's that's always the case with many trainers or with many with many male trainers training female trainees out here. I don't get y'all, bruh. I don't get y'all. Y'all are supposed to be helping these young ladies get their experience, man. Not to push up on them. So you right. you you was basically assaulted? That's what you're saying? Yeah. You you was yeah. assaulted by 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 a tra- by a trainee. Is he still with the company? He's he's still with the company. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? How is he still uh, okay, and- okay, show me state. How is he still with the company if he did he physically assault you or did he just verbally assault you? It was it it was verbally, but you know, people look at me crazy when I say this. I'm not out for anybody. I understand people are people; they're gonna do what they're gonna do. And don't get me wrong, he should have had lost his job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He should have. Yeah, he should have lost his job. He should have lost his job. He should have lost his job. I, that's I sexual. That's was, I was looking. That's harassment. That's that's harassment. the first thing. I woke up with his hands. In, right, I woke up with his hand in my underwear. What? Get, what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah. Wait, 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 hold up. At- hold up. Hold up. You woke up with this man's hand in your underwear? Yeah. Are you serious? Hold up. Hold up, show me state. And he still worked there? Yes. No, nah, man. No, nah, tell... Tell, tell this, tell, tell me you broke his hand. Tell me you did that. Okay. Let me, go ahead. Go ahead. What people have to realize, and I, you know, I tell my mom this all the time, and I'll tell any young lady this, and anybody may be against what I'm about to say. Yeah, I, I'm, but I'm when listening. You're in a situation, when you're in a situation at any given time, you can't just panic. You got to look at, at the future. Okay. What's going to happen in the future from all of this? Okay. Now, I could easily say, yeah, I broke his hand. Yeah, I did this, that, another. I jumped out the truck. I panicked. But I couldn't panic because I'm on the side of the highway in the middle of nowhere in the early morning. You know what I'm saying? This man could easily kill me, threw me in the woods, and told somebody, oh, she got mad and she got off the truck, and I don't know what happened to her. You know what I'm saying? So I had to think quick. So I, I calmed down. I jumped up quick. I calmed down, sat in the front seat, and just kind of paced it out until we got to the terminal. And when we got to the terminal, I completely went the hell off. Excuse my trust. I did contact the company. But at the same time, women all the time, yes, there are ones, but those, there's some of us out there that do this. And y'all see it because people get put in jail left and right for no reason. People sit up there and they cry wolf. And I don't want to be looked at as, oh, the chick that cried wolf because she might do it again. I had to get on another trainer truck. And I didn't want him to look at me any different like, oh, she might do me the same way. You know what I'm saying? She might come after my job. So I just told the company, look, this is what he did. I don't believe that he should have anybody in the truck. I think he should ride alone, and I don't think he needs to be a trainer ever again. They investigated everything. Come to find out, yes, they found out that I was telling the truth. They let him keep his job, and when I saw him again, because, yes, I did end up seeing him again, he was exactly by himself, nobody in his truck, and I, I was satisfied with that. No, so. no, 
no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, no, by taking the calm route because you, you're right. You know, something seriously could have happened while you was on the road. And yes, he could have, you know, jumped you in, a, dropped you in the woods and left you and all like that. But you got to understand this, that company knows who's all on their trucks. So I don't think you didn't have too much to worry about getting, uh, you know, you probably might, you know, got to a truck stop. You probably, probably would have just got left there. You could have, you know, of course, use your phone. But when you got back to the terminal and and you and you told, uh, you know, the the terminal manager or the safety department or whoever you talked to, what they in turn should have did, which they did investigate, but they shouldn't have let the man keep his job, man. That's sexual harassment. On on right. that sexual harassment on on many levels right there, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like man's hand inside of your panties off the rip. Like I can understand sexual harassment by talking and and just looking at you hard and making you feel uncomfortable. Dude had his hands on you. That's that's sexual harassment assault. Hell, dudes went right. to jail for less. You know what I'm saying? And he still have his job. Uh, mm -mm. mm -mm. Nah. But you know, you you did you 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 did cool. You played it calm. I you know, I'm glad nothing nothing serious happened to you. I'm glad that you're here to the you know to talk your experience, but you know what I'm saying? With with that entail, what what advice what advice do you have for women that's coming in the game now? Uh, that's coming in the game now. What advice do you have for them if they if they're ever in a situation of, of like the situation you was in? That's 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 a very hard question to answer. Because once again, everybody is different. You know, I can tell a woman to get with another woman, but women do the same thing that men do at these that you know at the time of day. Um, I can tell them to try to find somebody that they know and get on the truck with somebody that they know. You know. That, that's probably the, easiest, the, the best answer I can give to anybody. But at the same time, it's hard to kind of find people that you know with the company you want to be with. So all I can say is if anything like that ever happens, try to keep your cool. Like, literally try to keep your cool. Get to the closest terminal. Everybody will say, we'll get to a fuel stop. Yeah, that's, you can get to a fuel stop, but then you got these companies that don't even want to pay you to get places to get you from the fuel stop. So that's why I was just like, you know what? I knew we was going to the terminal, and I, I did what I could do to get us back to the terminal. And I, I listened to him use my expression, bitch, and complain, and all of this other stuff about what I was doing wrong. He was yelling at me at certain points of time, but I had to keep my cool to get myself to a safe spot. So whatever you do in any situation, get yourself to a safe spot first before you ask the food. That's what's up. That's what's up. That is what's up. Well, again, like I said, I am glad that uh, that that you that you hear and that you and that you you know speaking your experience on what happened. Hopefully, that would never ever happen to you again. Uh, now that you now that you obviously still with the company, you upgraded uh, you upgraded in the company. So now you're in your own truck. So how's how's your experience so far for you know so far for the rest of the duration? Um, okay, so, so far, I love truck driving. Mm -hmm. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. So, that's, that's, you know, no question. Um, when I first got with this company, I was okay. You know what I'm saying? After I got the turn truck, I was okay. But, I, you know, always, you're going to always hear something bad and negative about the company. They do this, they do that, da 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 da, da. And so, I didn't want to just sit up there and listen to that anybody on the negative you know, aspects of anything. I was just like, let me figure it out for myself. Mm -hmm. So when I, I got my first, um, my first suite manager, everything was cool. You know, um, I ran hard for them. They gave me decent enough load. Um, I ended up on, I guess you call it a golden board because I had, I had, um, I had just calling me left and right. Can you run this? Can you run that? Da, 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 da. But then eventually I got off of their fleet 
and got on another tweet. And ever since then, it's kind of been hell. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, they've given me late loads and blamed the late loads on me. They've had me sit for hours on end. You know, um, it's just, I don't know what happened. I really don't know what happened. So, um, every, I, I don't know. I don't even know what this is. <laughs> so this, so this is this is your first, uh, this is your first outing with uh, with a trucking company. What school did you did you go through? Uh, how how did you get your CDL? Did you go through? Did you go through a, a trucking school or did you go through a, a company sponsor school? I actually went to a truck trucking school. Oh, okay. Um, what was the school? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't go. Yeah, CDI. I didn't go through an actual um, job like you know any any company out there. I decided to do it on my own because I didn't want nobody to have me under contract for a while. I That's just wanted to be able to say, hey, look, yeah, I thought that was the most smartest thing to do, but I can go wherever I want to go and versus having to sit with somebody for a whole year and be uncomfortable mm -hmm. or unhappy. <clears throat> so was you able to, so, so was this out of pocket or, or you got this as a grant? It was a loan. Oh, okay. It was a loan. Okay. So, so, yeah, so are you are oh so you still doing so you still doing the monthly payment thing with them? Yeah, the, the the job actually pays a certain percentage of of it. Oh, you okay, they give you tuition. As long as with the job, they pay for it. The, the company right. give you the, the company you with give you a tuition reimbursement. Reimbursement. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so what was you? Yeah. So where where were you at before? Before trucking, what 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 you was doing before trucking? Airport. I was a ramp agent, okay. pushing planes, directing them in, and taking all the luggage off of it. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Did, uh, what what was your experience with that? I mean, I love that job too. <laughs> I don't say nowhere that I don't like. You know what I'm saying? I, if, if if I don't like it, I'm not staying there. But I really did like. I love being around the big airplane, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so, so yeah, that was that was fun. So, well, let me ask you this: if 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 truck driving don't work for you, what would be your what would be your plan B? Would it be going back to going back to the airport? I truck, look, truck driving has to work. <laughs> Well, you said you 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 said so you, but work. you said you love the airport and don't look like you had any. I major mean, I love issues. the airport, you know, but everything has its time and everything has to come to the end at some point. And that was just one of those. That the door closed for me for the final time, and I decided to come on over here to this side. And I, I mean, I love it. I, I used to look up in the air, you know, because I worked at the air, airport for years. Right. You know, at breaking points, I worked there and I stop and I go back and I stop and. Between times, I always hear an airplane. I look up in the air, and I'm like, man, I, I, I got to get back. But now I see an airplane in the sky. I'm just like, yeah, that was fun while it lasted. But I, I like what I do. I really do like what I do. Okay. Well, you got you 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 got to understand. You got to like uh you got to like truck driving for what it is. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta you know you guys yeah. like I said, you new jacks out there. Y'all really got to understand what it is. You know, I mean, you could just. It, yeah, you could just easily just jump behind the seat, uh, behind the wheel of this truck, and it's automatic, and you could just drive down the street without without a care in the world. But then, you know, when you you guys got to realize that there is a lot of stuff, intricate stuff with truck driving. You could get into an accident. Right. Well, what happened? What happened when you get a ticket? You know what I'm saying? Because getting a ticket in a in a in a truck. It's totally different than getting a ticket in your car. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, you got to make sure you keep up with your DAC report. You got to make sure you keep up with your CSA scores. Because, yeah, just by you having your CDL and you can, you know, you can get a, you know, you can get a job or whatever. But if your DAC report ain't on point, you know, if somebody puts some something messed up on your DAC report, it's going to be hard to get that that good job that or that good trucking job that you really want then you have to turn around and work for a black ops company or turn around and work for a mom and pops company that may or may not treat you well in order to get your that report clear from whatever misgivings that any companies will put you you know put on there you know so definitely make sure you keep up with that because you know 
you uh you said you were in the midst of you know trying to find another company um unfortunately being that you only got six months there's only a few companies that will probably take you in you know what i'm saying yeah yeah well i'm kind of searching for a new one right now and um, there, there are companies out there that hire you at six months, but they might put a trainer with you for a little bit just to see what you know how to do and make sure that you're not going to get up in anything. Right. And then some of them will let you go on about the, you know, go on about the business so they have that much faith in you. Um, so, so, I don't know. <laughs> so, in, so, so in this industry, how how's your kids taking it? You said you got kids. How many kids you have? I have four kids, and um, they miss me. They miss me. Okay. Um, what's what's the? And I, but what's, they do know that I'm out here doing this for them. What's the what's the ages? Sixteen, fourteen, eleven, and five. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, so you got so back home, back you know, back home, being that your kids is not grown, back home you got you got help. I did. Oh, okay. I did. My mom and my dad helped. Yeah, yeah, because that's gonna that's that's being that you got kids and everything, that's that's that even makes trucking for a single well, my my party might be speaking too soon, but I think you said it, you were single. Single? Single. Says single. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It do say single. Yeah. Um, you know, I I know trucking as a single mom is kinda hard out here. Um, so how you say your kids miss you, so how do you how do you, by chance, uh, you know, keep up with them? Because I'm assuming the company you're with is an over-the-road company, so you're not home every week. So how how's the kids taking, you know, how you, you know, keeping in contact with your kids and making sure they still doing what they I need to, to do? I talk to them. Yeah, I talk to them through, through FaceTime. Um, it's, it's hard. Um, <laughs> as long as I've been out here for six months, I've been home in a total of nine days. So they haven't even seen me that much. Um, we kind of got accustomed to it. They understand it, but it's like, it's still, it's still hard on everybody. Okay. So, okay. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find a way to get home faster, but it is what it is. You know, when you're, when you're, when you're a single parent, you got to do what you got to do to protect the nest and take care of the nest. You know, Okay. I look at it like this, you know, you got animals out there and I always refer back to animals because they whether we believe it or not, they are like some wise little things. But you look at an animal and they'll leave their nest, they'll leave their babies by themselves while they go out and they hunt. Mm -hmm. And they pray to God that when they get back, they little they little babies are still where they left. So I kinda I kinda look at it like that. I gotta go out and take care of my nest back home and pray that parent my grandparents grandparents are, you know, kinda watching out for them the way they need to. So being in this male dominated industry, man, how, how do you how how do you think the males out here see see women in this industry? <laughs> yeah, that part. Um, they be looking. <laughs> <laughs> they be looking, uh they look they look at I don't I don't I don't wanna speak to no men out there, but they be shocked. They be shocked when they see a woman drive they drive by and then uh I, you know every now and again i look over and they look over and then they start smiling in their way and and uh then you get out of the truck stop and they just can't believe they just saw a woman get out of the truck stop you know one that's that's dressed like a woman <laughs> <laughs> so so you have any uh you have any of these uh I, have any of uh, any of these male truck drivers out here that be trying to push up on you, try to holler at you when they when they see you at the fuel stop, they trying to they 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 trying to talk to you? Yeah, I have, you know, and if yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, you got some decent like some men out there, they are so such sweethearts. They'll look out for you, you know. I was in my truck one one time and uh it was just crackhead, I guess, walking around my truck. Mm -hmm. And two guys on either one side of my truck were kind of watching out. And I was knocked out sleep on our truck. Uh, I had my dog with me. He's a German Shepherd. But the dog went to bark, and the guy went away. And the guys around me just started telling me what was going on. And me and one of the guys who worked for the same company I worked for, um, we just started talking. And then that night, we kind of ate dinner together. It wasn't no hanky tank or anything, but just a nice, decent conversation. And we have remained friends since then. So... He calls me and checks up on me and everything like that, making sure I'm making money the way I need to and running the way I need to. 
And then by the time he came down to, he was like, nah, you ain't going to make no money. You need to go. <laughs> yeah, it's just some company. <laughs> he tried to figure it out with me. Just some companies where but, you know, uh, where you at, you know, you got to figure out if you're gonna make that make the kind of make the kind of money that you want to make. That's that's the thing, you know, because getting in right, getting in not, getting into but, it right now, of course, you're not gonna make. In the first, just realize that in the first year, you guys is not gonna make no money at all. They they will tell you, yeah, you're gonna make about sixty, seventy, eighty. No. No, you're looking more like 45, 50 in the first year, because in the first six months, in the first six months, you you, or in the first couple of months, you're going to be training and you're going to be getting that training money. Right. And then after that, ain't no telling what, what CPM you started off at, especially if you're a new guy coming right, coming right into it. So. So, yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, uh, Miss Show Me State, man, yo, that's 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 crazy. You know what? <laughs> the crazy stories, man, that you had, uh, that 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 you got going on. Um, yeah. All right, all right. So, have you? So, you in the midst of looking for, uh, looking for uh, new companies? Any, any, uh, anything, anything caught your eyes yet? Um, yeah, well, I it, not really, not really. I, Cause you're gonna, it's, you gotta weigh the pros and cons. You gotta know what you're looking at. You know what I'm saying? Um, I want to be home with my kids. I want to be able to tuck them in at night. So of course, if I go home, I'm going to look at a job that I don't want to touch freight, but I'm going to have to touch the freight. But to be home with them versus not to touch the freight to make more money versus be over the road and making McDonald's money. You know, you got to look at the pros and the cons. So what are you, what are you looking for? And since I want to be home with them, then I guess I'm going to have to touch the freight. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Gotcha. That is what's up. So that's, that's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I'm used to it because I worked at the airport. All right. All right. Well, Miss Missouri, show me state. Thank you for coming on and chopping it up with me. I really do appreciate it. Um, how can uh how can the people find you or uh how, you have a you have an Instagram or something like that? Um, yeah, they can, I'm on Facebook. Oh, okay. Well, Facebook. You know, I'm not a fan of Facebook, but do you you have an Instagram though, right? I do have an Instagram. Um, it's Colton Girl. Hold, hold on, it's right quick. Like I, I, I can't hear. What did you say? Oh, I had to turn my music oh. down. All right, what you say your Instagram is again? It's Coast, like coast to coast. Oh, Coast. The letter N. Wait, 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 wait. It's Coast. C O C O A S T. Uh huh. Uh huh. The letter N. Coasting girl. I see you. Gal. G A. Yeah, I, I see you. All right, Coasting Gal. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I got me. All right. I got you. I just went ahead and sent you a request <laughs> so that uh, that you guys, if you guys yep. want to follow her on uh, Instagram, because Instagram is what I pretty much uh, promote, you know, because sometimes, sometimes Facebook, but Facebook is like, you know, you probably have your own, you know, Facebook. And you don't want too many people to click on your Facebook. And all like that. But Instagram. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll get you on Instagram. <laughs> All yeah, right. Yeah, I'll be on them once on the Facebook. But yeah, yeah. All right. Well, you can find if you are if you guys is any is if you guys are in any of the uh, of the black trucking groups because that's where I found this young lady at. You can probably find her. Her tag name is Missouri. Show me state, and that's Missouri with a Z. I'm I'm saying that right. right? Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Miss Missouri, show me state. Thank you again. Thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. And on that note, Anytime. on that note, me and Missouri, if you guys like content like this and more, all you got to do is hit me up in the uh, Gmail. That's Lockout Men. G, uh, podcast at gmail.com or you can hit me up in the Instagram where I am at and Miss uh, damn she just gave it to me Coasting Girl you can find her there too 
uh, just hit me up there. Now, if you like content like this and more, you can subscribe, share, damn it. <laughs> you can subscribe, share, comment, and hit that bell and that all button for more. All right. And on that note, me and Coasting Girl, we are gone. <laughs> hey. Oh man. I had to get my I had to get my I had to get my outro. <laughs> I had to get my outro together because it's like I had like so so much going on and I'm still I am still tripping. I am still tripping on the uh on on on, on the uh on the trainer man. That that dude hand would have yeah. been broke. I, I that dude would have been broke. He would have been he would have been sulking in that seat if that was me. Like yo, touch me again here. Yeah, I mean I I don't know why I didn't go ahead and him on, you know, getting fired, but it's just my mom when I talk to her about it, she she's like the way she raised me. Mm -hmm like, you know, you don't want to always have to go out after somebody's job to the point. And that's true. The man needs his money just like I need mine. Oh, man. And he like I said, he should have been fired, but... I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, sure he would have. Yeah, I'm, I'm, right, I'm sure he would have. He would have quote unquote got another job somewhere. You know, you got your CDLs. You're gonna always find. I ain't gonna say you can always have another job, but you can always find another job. So, so yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Awesome. What do you think? What do you, what do you think? How it went? I like it. Let me tell you something. Uh, I have. I've been trying to get me and a friend of mine. To